damn it, I hate summer. Why are we doing it outside? You got any better ideas? Can we do this inside? I'm, I'm, I'm just pretty much talking to myself. There's nobody in the back, look. Hey, what's up guys? It's Donnie back with another video for you. Now, if you check my earlier videos, my starter production gear has been an iPhone 6, an external audio recorder, a Mac Mini with iMovie for post-production. I was able to learn a lot from this basic setup. Then a few months later, a lot has changed. No, not better makeup. So in this video, I would like to share my basic production gear here in Create and Talk. So let's start with the stuff behind the camera. What I learned a lot from other videographers, investing on the production gear like lighting, tripods, lenses are more important than investing on a 4K camera. What I learned is that the camera is just part of the tool you need for creating your ideas and inspiration. And it's not about building your gear around your camera. So I hope by sharing to you what I have invested so far will help you decide on your basic production setup if you want to build your own. Now the first thing I bought was a 4K camera. Nah, just kidding. A lighting setup is the first thing I invested. Here are my basic lighting setup from Limo Studio. Two softbox light stands. Each comes with a 700 watt light bulb. Softbox lights are much softer and I want to replicate more of a window light. They're around $76 on Amazon, but I got them on sale for $65. Getting a lighting setup will be a game changer. I've heard a few people bought different cameras and they never got the look that they like until they get some lighting gear. Otherwise, if you cannot invest some lighting, then do your videos outside. Natural light will be the best. Next, whether you have a big camera or just a smartphone camera, stabilizing your shots would make a more professional outcome for your ideas. I own three tripods, but I only bought one of them with my own money. First is a basic Target tripod from Target. My mom wasn't using this one, so I asked her if I can have it. I use it sometimes as an extra tripod if I need to use it to hold a third camera, a mic, or to hold my iPad up with it. My second tripod is a Sunpack, which I bought for $40. A pretty sturdy light aluminum build, it's my second tripod for a second camera or a mic. What I like about this tripod is I can take the head out and use it as a monopod. These days I use this tripod to mount my camera slider on. My third tripod is a Vanguard Alta 1, which I salvaged before someone was about to throw it away. It was missing a quick shoe, so I bought one. It has the smoothest pants out of the three, and it's the most sturdy. This is usually my go-to tripod. It's the one I use the most. I also invested on a camera slider. It really makes a difference with my production, especially for product shots. This camera slider is from DLC, and it also has these wheels, which gives me more options to create smoother pan shots. Next, I'm gonna talk about my audio. I use the Zoom H1, which has really been a good audio recorder. Even experienced video producers still use this recorder. It's very simple to use, and even the onboard mic picks up sound pretty well as long as you're in a quiet environment. To get a clearer audio, I use a Sony lab mic together with the H1. When I use the setup, I could have an instant wireless audio setup, but you do still have to match the sound in post-production. This time I use the Audio-Technica ATR 6550s. It's a condenser shotgun microphone which allows me to capture audio at a distance without too much noise surrounding the mic. Getting a dead cat for it would also block any wind noises. I have this one connected directly to my camera, recording the audio directly with the video. This option would eliminate any audio syncing on post-production. Of course, cameras are very important tools for video production. They are the brains that capture the ideas you create. With the cameras available these days, you could never go wrong at whatever you get. From there, it's all about what are you using your camera for and what other features you need in the camera to help you accomplish the ideas you want. Don't be hyped up with megapixel this, 4K that, 5K, 8K, HD this. So in the next video, I will talk about the cameras I use and my opinions about them. Thank you for watching part one of my production gear video. Stay tuned for part two where I talk about most of the cameras. Click like if you like it, subscribe so you can get updated for future content, and leave your comments below if you have any questions. Again, this is Tommy, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.